next oh, we got what's the difference between pitches now this is a very 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 good video because i've been literally trying to figure out and trying to understand mlb pitches all right now you put your thinking caps on all right school is in session so hey if you want more mlb videos hit that like button hit that sub button Legends out. Wait, also, whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. What was that? I feel like this. Seriously, what pitch was that? <clears throat> one goes this way, one goes that way, one goes like that, another's doing this. Nice. And batters only have 150 milliseconds to identify the pitch and decide whether to swing. I be saying That's that too. That's half as long as it takes to blink, That's but it's the saying. difference between this. Uh oh, that ball is way gone. And this. And a miss and breaks like, you gotta really think about it. Being a MLB batter is like the hardest things of all time. The hardest. You have to have the greatest reflexes. Then the pitcher... The, let me see if we get a POV. Let's, let's look up POV. POV of batter's box MLB. I think it, it, it actually depends also um, from, from where... From a different stadiums. Um, let's see. Okay, this is this is like a shorts video right here. Let's see. Bottom left handed hitters will pull this ball. Bottom left handed. I don't think is this hitters. from right here. Oh, this is the um but this don't yeah, that's why I said I think it's the MLB stadium, bro, because this looks very close. Like it's not this close, bro. Or maybe 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 I'm tripping. Am I tripping, chat? Am I tripping? Is it is it not far? I think we're far. See, when I played in high school, it was oh here we go right here. Catcher POV. We might we might react to some games like this. Should we react to something like this, chat? We might can. I like I look at you like this. It's been in the dark. This. I don't know. Yo. What it is. I don't know what it is. See, this is yeah. This this is like high school. But I think I think so. If the in the MLB, how different from the MLB to high school or college is the it does the stadiums get like the does the actual baseball diamond change or no? Because I think after you like you know obviously when you want a kid and stuff like that the the bases are very close and then you know because you're a kid but once you get to the high school and college it's like a real base pass so I think maybe it don't change. Maybe I don't know. Y'all can let me know in the comments. Oh, he hit it. Hey, Homer. Oh, you better run, you better run, you better run. Oh, oh, where the ball at? Oh, okay. We got, we got to wrap this up like that. We got to wrap this up like that. That looked fun. So, quick question: What is the difference between all these pitches? Copy right. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to pitch school. Let's get All into right. it. Pitch school. Nice. There are four basic types of pitches, okay. and each has a unique way of challenging a batter. Change up breaking. Fastballs use speed. Change ups are all about timing. Oh. Breaking balls rely on movement, and knuckle balls. We'll we'll come back to those. Uh. First up, good old number one, the heater, cheddar. Gas. Yo, I like this. Hold on. First up, good old number. Okay, hold on. Let's see this. So, the uh, Elias is, is cheese, cheddar, gas, Hummer. That is the worst shit I've ever heard in my life. He threw a cheese ball at me. He threw a cheddar ball, a gas ball. Gas ball, not bad. A Hummer ball, nah, bro. 92 to 100, though, is a velocity. That's insane. That's what I'm saying. So, they, so not only are they throwing the best... Not only is the pitcher's mile might might not be might be far, then you gotta react fast. Then they are the best pitchers of all time because they're in the MLB. They're the best of the best. You at the top of the top. <clears throat> no one throws. Okay, we can let her talk now. Number one, the heater, cheddar, gas, the fastball. This ball completely blown by him. The goal of the fastball is yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. A pitcher throws the ball as fast as he can trying to blow by the batter. Then he fires another flaming fastball. The fastball was the original pitch. 
and it just kept getting faster. The current uh. record is 105 miles per hour. Damn. So pitchers threw heat even before the radar gun gave us an accurate number. And they had to get pretty creative in how they measured. By some accounts, Bob Feller hit triple digits in the 1940s. <laughs> I and guess that's speed smart. isn't the fastball's only weapon. While they mostly go straight, how you throw it can give it just a little bit of movement. See, yeah, that's the classic always... four-seamer is the straightest and thrown the hardest. Then there's the cutter and the two-seamer. These guys okay. move horizontally. Damn, man, it's kind of crazy. Cause I wish I really would have learned this stuff while I was playing. Cause I, at my, I wasn't a pitcher. So that's number one. So that's probably why I was mostly focusing on my position. I played first base. I played really basically the whole infield. I play every, really, I play every position except catcher and pitcher. You know what I'm saying? It, it just different periods in my life. I was playing different positions. So when I was in high school, I was playing a lot of uh, first base, and then I got moved to um, outfield because I was fast. So, you know, obviously I'm really focusing on catching the ball, like not throwing the ball. But the thing about me is, and it's crazy because I, I low-key mess my shoulder up because of this too. Like my shoulder now is, is hurt. I think I, I messed my rotator cuff up because I was trying to throw as hard as I can. You know, because that's kind of sweet. You know, it's, that's like the cool thing to do, throw as hard as you can. But it was never accurate and it was never done the right way. It wasn't done properly. So I think that's why I messed my shoulder up. Um, and I, I used to always throw it. I think I throw it like this. High through the ball every single time. But I think it's just not the best way to do it. Just a little now. bit of movement. Like the classic four seamer is the straightest and thrown the hardest. Then there's the cutter and the two seamer. These guys move horizontally. See, it's kind of the same. I think I. Yeah, I think it's. I think I did. Yeah, I was doing a two seamer, but how was that stupid? I'm bro. That's all. Just in opposite directions. And are known for producing plenty of firewood. Cutting in and taking apart that bat. Finally, there's fastballs that drop, the sinker and splitter. The difference is in the grip, but the goal is the same. Ugly swings in the dirt and easy ground ball outs. Grounder to short should be a double play, it is. Even though all these pitches move a few inches in different ways, they're all still fastballs. He struck him out. Damn, Look at Freeman, man. he smashed his bat in half. Dang, how you break it is the original pitch in baseball, and it remains the best. If you can throw it north of 98, you don't have to worry too much about your other pitches. Take Nathan Patterson. Nathan went to a Rockies game last year as a fan, but after hitting 96 on the stadium speed challenge, the Oakland A's offered him a contract. Yo! Whether it sinks, cuts, or blazes its way through, in 2019, 58% of pitches were fastballs. Dang. It's number one for oh. a reason. Okay, Crazy. next up, the yin to fastballs yang, the changeup. Maybe the sneakiest weapon in a pitcher's arsenal. He kept swinging harder and harder. Oh, yeah, because they're like, wait, he says the changeup, right? The goal of the changeup is to throw off a hitter's timing. If they're oh, expecting yeah. a 99 mile per hour fastball and it comes in at 75, we're going to swing way in front of it. In the 1850s, Harry Wright came in and delivered a ball that looked like a fastball but came up slow. And this was the change of pace. It preceded the curveball in the many attempts by pitchers to deceive batters. That's the great. greater difference between the speed of your fastball and your changeup, the harder it is to hit. Pedro Martinez was one of the best to ever do it. He could dial his fastball up to 97, and then he'd throw his changeup at 77 miles per hour. When a hitter only has half a blink to react, he'd get a lot of whiffs. Back in the day, I was throwing 98. Now I'm not the power person that I was before. So in 2009, I threw my changeup. It was by Ben Fitz. I put my middle finger in the middle of the two seams, and then I throw it as hard as I can. And I was throwing it and throwing it, and then, hmm. Am I really good? Am I really good? Am I really good? And then start striking out FD, right? It was like, this is it. This is my pitch. He got him! A perfect game by the King, Felix Hernandez! Lots of pitchers have put their spin on the changeup, but no pitch is slower than the Ephus. The name Ephus. comes from the Hebrew word for zero and was invented in the 1940s by Rip Sewell. Take a look at the height of that. What in the fuck? The goal? A gentle lob. And somehow it works. <laughs> time and time again. 
Next up, the you know how I think I've seen this in like movies. If somebody do this to me, bro, you know how mad I'm gonna be. Do you know how mad I'm gonna be, bro? That is like disrespectful. Honestly, it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. <laughs> and then, it, and then if I swing and I miss, oh my. Next up, the hook, Uncle Charlie, the bender, Charlie. the hammer, aka the breaking ball. The 1880. A breaking ball is any pitch that primarily relies on movement to deceive the batter, like a curveball. To the batter, a curveball looks like it's going straight. Then at the last microsecond, it drops off the table. It looks like a strike, but as it travels the bottom, it goes out of it. Let's talk about spin. The seams on a baseball are raised just 0.03 inches off the surface. When a pitcher spins the ball, that seam causes air to gather on one side of the baseball, creating a high pressure pocket above and a low pressure pocket below. Ooh, so the ball drops into nice. the low pressure pocket, meaning it moves. And the greater the spin, the greater the movement. This seems pretty complicated, but 17-year-old Jim Creighton figured it out when he threw the first breaking pitch all of the way back in 1858. That's crazy. Breaking balls have been making hitters look foolish ever since. <laughs> but the two most common breaking balls thrown today are the curveball, which drops down, mm. and the slider, which drops down and slides across. Oh, okay. But with all breaking balls, the key is deception. You gotta throw it like a fastball, honestly. The more you can throw it like a fastball and get comfortable throwing it like a fastball, you'll be successful because it's all about making the hitter believe it's something that it's not. Now, there's a whole other branch to the breaking ball family tree, illegal pitches. Remember how the raised seam on the baseball creates movement? Well, doctoring a baseball, rubbing it with a little emery board, or putting some pine tar or spit on it, can make the movement of a breaking ball even more extreme. <laughs> All of these have been illegal since the 1920s. So that's why I said that. But pitchers can find oh, ways to be sneaky. Smart. Proceed. Finally, the outcast of the pitch. Ah. The literal oddball. The butterfly with hiccups, the knuckleball. The weirdest pitch in baseball and possibly the most misunderstood. The reason why it's called a knuckleball is that when you throw it, you see your knuckles up here. When the ball wants to see my dumb ass, I was throwing a ball. The hell's up on the ball? Was it like this? No, I, th I think I put the my these two fingers against the ball. So it was like, I, I threw it like this. <laughs> I was doing it like this. I was doing this, bro. They supposed to be supposed to be like that. Wow. And you supposed to, then on top of that, see, this is what I'm saying. I didn't know how the ball was supposed to be like, see how you got the ball? It's, the, the seam is like this. See, I would still throw it the, the fastball way and then do it like that. <sighs> Maybe, I don't know. I don't know if it was because we was in, in high school was the reason they didn't really teach you because you're in high school. Like, if you don't know how to throw the ball by now, bro, why are you even playing? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know if it was because of that or because of the coaching. So, because I was, I would think, like, bro, even if you do know, you're just going to skim over it just so everybody know the facts. You know what I mean? It's never hurt to relearn something. You know what I'm saying? So, I just wish that my coach would have told me, and I feel like I would have been a better thrower, bro. And I, and I wouldn't have injured both of my shoulders. Like to spin backwards out of your hand as you're right releasing now. it. The object is to yeah, they have control four the top half of the ball so it comes out without any spin. Look at that. Spin. Here we go again. Yeah. Remember, breaking balls use spin to move in specific ways. But when you take that spin away, it becomes totally unpredictable. Even the pitcher doesn't Damn. know where it's going. Or the catcher. Got him, but it gets away. A good knuckler on a good day, it's unhittable. Yo. But a bad one usually ends up in the seats. Yeah, right. The knuckleball has become borderline mythical. No one sets out to become a knuckleballer. I tell people the knuckleball kind of found me, right? I was drafted in the eighth round by the Pirates as a first baseman. I struggled badly. So in 1989, I was playing catch with another first baseman, throwing knuckleballs back and forth to each other. We're trying to hit each other in the kneecaps. My manager walked behind me and said, hey, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, pregame catch turned a mediocre first base prospect into a 19-year pitching career. But it gets weirder. The only people who can teach this fickle pitch? 
former knuckleballers. Tim Wakefield learned from the great Charlie Hoff. He put his arm around me, said, welcome to the fraternity, kid. He asked me whatever you want. I'm here for you. Oh, I know that's how you like, do it? You feel wow. like you're on an island by that's yourself. That's another thing. So. I'm literally throwing up. I'm throwing it with the, the, my bottom half. I'm just doing, I'm doing, letting it go. You're supposed to. Well, you, you've got me on speed dial anytime. It's just you weird, bro, because looking back now, it's just like. Yourself, so you, you've got me on speed dial anytime you need anything. And I was able to pass that torch on to Ari Dickey. Sadly, the dark arts of the knuckler are disappearing. Only one knuckleballer threw in the bigs in 2019. But the knuckleball has been pronounced dead before and always seems to find a way back. It'll never die. I think it just goes to sleep for a little while and then somebody else will come back and resurrect it. Don't ever give up on it. Whew. Okay. To recap, you've got your fastballs, speed, change-ups, timing, breaking balls, movement, knuckleballs, unpredictability. Why so many pitches? Well, every pitcher has a different arsenal. Combinations of pitches that no one else uses or throws quite like they do. What works for one pitcher is totally different for another. With a million possible combinations of different grips, windups, releases, and spins, pitchers are inventing new pitches all the time. Take a look at this work of art. This is a churve. That's the churve. Debuted churve. and named by Joey Lucchese in 2018, he's the only person who can throw it. What he is it? He made it up himself. It's yeah, got the grip it? of a changeup and the release of a curve, but its what? movement is all its own. What? Pitchers and pitches keep evolving. So not, so not only are they the best of the best, all things I, I named before, but now they're mixing all the every pitch into one. Imagine something had the speed. It's, a, it's the speed of this. Every, no, so think about every single thing. So whatever a fastball, right? What makes a fastball like what's his what's his flaws? What's his, what's the cons of a fa of a fastball? So you take all the cons of a fastball and you just add on the pros from other pitches. So now you combine and get so every so it don't make, now this pitch don't have no flaws. It's literally just the perfect pitch. And no one can like. So let's try oh. this again. 150 milliseconds on the clock. What pitch is that? Still can't tell. Just be grateful you're not in the batter's box. <laughs> Thanks.